Good evening, mommies and daddies, brothers and sisters, uncles and aunties. God bless every one of us in Jesus' mighty name. Wherever we may be joining us from, I want to specially welcome every one of us to our, our Monday night Bible club. I want to specially say a very big thank you to all our mommies and daddies watching us tonight. Wherever you may be watching from, the Lord bless every one of us in the name of jesus christ i'm hoping we have had a very beautiful day wherever we are connecting from the lord bless you the lord make his face shine upon you may the lord be gracious to us all in the name of jesus we can say thank you enough for to everyone joining us wherever you may be watching or connecting from thank you so much mommies and daddies brothers and sisters uncles and aunties and this broadcast this service is being brought to us by the ministry, your church, God's church, our church, everybody's church, the church of God called Generations of God Church International, the church where God answers every prayer. Thank you so much for joining us. We want to appreciate everyone tonight. The Lord Almighty will honor you as we gather before the Almighty God. Family, let's bow down our heads as we pray right now. Before the Almighty God, let's pray together. Father Lord, we want to say thank you so much to you, Lord. Jehovah, we worship you. King of kings, we exalt you. Almighty God, we adore you. We say you are God and you are good, Lord. May your name alone be praised forever, Lord. May your name alone be glorified. Even as we come before you right now, we say, Father, come and take your stage, take your place, have your way. Even in our gathering tonight, we invite you into our meeting. Father, speak to us, Lord. Open our eyes, open our hearts. Give us understanding, Lord. And as many people that will watch later, Lord, speak to their heart, Lord. Thank you because you are our good shepherd. Have your way, Daddy. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Once again, good, mo good evening, mommies and daddies, brothers and sisters, uncles and aunties. God bless every one of us in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. We love you. We appreciate God for your life. And we pray the hand of the Lord shall be upon us all in Jesus' name. Amen. Wherever you are, thank you once again. Family, tonight we're going to be talking about another Bible character. And this person is the person we called Jonathan. I don't know how many of us know who Jonathan was in the Bible. Please feel free to share tonight. What do we know about Jonathan in the Bible? What do we know about Jonathan in the Bible? Who is Jonathan? Family, over to us all in Jesus' name. Mm. Kindly unmute yourself and then, mm. yes, over to you, man. Jonathan was Saul's son. Hey, and he, yes, and he was a very good friend of David. Absolutely. A, a matter of fact, he, if it wasn't for Jonathan, Saul might have killed David. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. He also had a handicapped son called Mishabafish. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Yes, yes, yes. All right. I, I won't say any more. I'll leave somebody else to say. Uh, no problem, man. Thank you so much, man, for opening that for us, man. Thank you very much. Mommy, I'm seeing your hand up, Mommy Mary. Unmute yourself, man. God bless you, man. Yeah, I think um, Mommy Saisi has said most of what I was going to say. He was the eldest son of um, Saul and, um, and also a very close friend to David. Yes, ma and very loyal to David. Absolutely. He was loyal to his father as well, but he was loyal to David. And um, he became friend with David after David killed Goliath. Mm. 
that's when he became friend with him and the loyalty remained till the, Jonathan was killed his father his two brothers and him they were when the father fell on his sword and because he was stabbed but um Jonathan and his two brothers were killed and um David took that very bad because they were so close. Mm. And um, somebody else can say something else. Absolutely, Ma. Thank you so much for that, Ma. Yeah. You spoke on the points as well, the loyalty part. Thank you mm. very much, Mommy. God bless mm. you. Thank you so much, Mommy. He I'm also sorry. wrote a poem yeah. to commemorate both Saul and Jonathan. Okay. Because he didn't leave the father, even though the father wanted to kill him. When he wrote the poem, uh, in it he talked very highly of both of them, mm. and it's um it's in somewhere in Samuel, I'm not so sure Samuel one or Samuel somewhere. The poem okay. is written. Okay. And okay. It's called God the Song you. of Bo. Yeah. Okay. God bless you, man. Thank you so much for that, man. Absolutely, you've hit another point as well. God bless you, man. Thank you. And to everyone, anyone, anyone who still want to add anything to what mommies have said, anyone, family, or you want to type, as we said, it's your service is everybody's service. We are here to learn about God and learn about what the Bible is saying. Praise the Lord. This is more like us going to Bible school. Praise the Lord. God bless every one of us in Jesus' name. We are talking about the man called Jonathan. So please, if you want to share, you have opportunity to speak now. Anyone, who is Jonathan? If somebody asks you, what do we know about Jonathan? What can we say? Our mommies tonight have opened the floor for us. They've told us Jonathan was the son of Saul. Praise the Lord. And they spoke about his loyalty. They spoke about one of his um, sons that was blessed, made feeble shirt. And also, yes. What, and also that Jonathan wrote a poem as well. He was, poet, he, he was a poet. He wrote a poem about what happened. So family, what do we think? Anyone? Okay, if there's nobody, okay. Brother Shola, unmute yourself, sir. God bless you. All right, thank you, sir. Okay. Yeah, Jonathan was, was a friend of David and was a son to so, but it was first mentioned in the book of First Samuel 13, chapter 2. Um, first Samuel 13 to verse 2, rather, sorry. As as a plus, I would like to say Jonathan was also a warrior. Absolutely. Absolutely. He was also a warrior because he, he led people in battle too. Absolutely. Yeah, thank you, sir. Thank you very much for that, sir. God bless you so much. Thank you so much for sharing that. Amen. God bless every one of us. Thank you so much, mommies and daddies, brothers and sisters, uncles and aunties, wherever we are, we set the ball rolling. Amen. Jonathan, the, main, the name Jonathan means Jehovah's gift. Jonathan means God's gift, Jehovah's gift. So that's the name. The, the name means Jehovah's gift. So it's not just an ordinary name. It's a name that carries authority. Jonathan means Jehovah's gifts. Praise the Lord. So what is the ancestry and the family life of Jonathan? Jonathan was a prince, a crown prince, a prince, the son of the first king of Israel, Saul. And as much as he was a leader in Israel and part of the royal line, he was the first son of the king of Israel, the son of the first king in Israel, prince, a prince. He was of the family of the Benjamin. So he came from the tribe of the Benjamin. Praise the Lord. And also, what can we say about Jonathan? Jonathan, a tribe that was noted for his heroes and warriors. As our brother said, he was a warrior. He was a fighter. So he came from that lineage of warriors. They fight. They are known for their battles and warriors. Heroes. So Jonathan ended up in the middle of a conflict between Saul, his father, and David is friend. Family, please be honest. Say it. How can we describe that loyalty? You know that your father is your father. Then you know that your father wants to kill your friend. How can we describe that? Can we not call that betrayal? Can we call, please, family, tonight is 
a night for us to talk. That's why I said it's a very interesting teaching tonight. How can somebody love his friend so much and disclose all the secrets of his father to the friend? Mm. Amen. Praise the Lord. Please, let's think about that. I will talk on that. So he was about 30 years old when he was first of all introduced in the book of First Samuel chapter. Praise the Lord. The first time he was just about 30 years old when he was being introduced in the Bible. When and where did he live? Jonathan lived in Israel at about 1000 BC. That is before Christ was born. Jonathan lived a thousand years before Christ was born. Towards the beginning of his life, it was a difficult time and Israel was subject to the Philistines and other foreign powers. Saul was crowned the first king over Israel and under his rule, Israel became a local power in the region. It was the beginning of the golden years for Israel. So Jonathan came when things were a bit difficult. What was his training and occupation? As a prince, Jonathan most likely had a higher education than most of the people. He was skilled in war and lived at the royal court. He had great leadership abilities and all the people look up to him. You can see Jonathan was people's people. He was a very friendly person. He had a, he was a prince charming. He had a very good grace around him. So what was his place in history of the Bible? Jonathan was the first prince of Israel. He was the first prince of Israel. He was in line to become the second king. Yet, because of Saul's unfaithfulness, this never happened. And instead, Jonathan is remembered as a loyal friend to David and a devoted leader of his country. What are his special traits? So Jonathan should have become the next king after his father. But, but because of his loyalty to his friend, he did not get to that place. So what, was, what were, were the traits, special traits that Jonathan had? He was a strong warrior. He was skilled in with bow and he knows how to carry bow and arrow. He was a great leader of the people as well. So what do we say now? Let's quickly look at his weakness. And what can we say is the weakness of Jonathan? What was his weakness? Praise the Lord. What do we think was the weakness of Jonathan family? We must have heard the name Jonathan before, and our mommies and my brother have they've explained who Jonathan was. So family, what do we know about Jonathan? We are here to learn Bible. This is a what we call Bible club. What do you think was Jonathan's weakness? Praise the Lord. Nobody? Okay. I will look at it that Jonathan's weakness was being deceptive. Amen. He was being deceptive. Let's look at 1 Samuel chapter 20. 1 Samuel chapter 20, verse 29. That was a place where it was described. Jonathan did not say the whole truth. 1 Samuel chapter 20, verse 29. 1 Samuel chapter 20, verse 29. If you have your Bible, 1 Samuel chapter 20, verse 29. And, I, and he said, please, let me go for our family as a sacrifice in the city. And my brother has commanded me to be there. And now I have found favor. If I found favor in your eyes, please let me get away and see my brothers. Therefore, he has not come to the king's table. Then Saul's anger was arose against Jonathan. And he said to him, you son of a perverse, rebellious woman, do I not know that you have chosen the son of Jesse to your own shame, to the shame of your mother's nakedness? See how the father became angry. Because Jonathan was who paid a lot of allegiance to David. I think the lesson we should learn there is when God chooses a man or a woman, it does not matter who is against the person. There will always be one person who will be on that person's side. Jonathan, um, David as, is somebody who we know the story very well. We're going to study David as well one of these days. David suffered rejection even from his own father's house. He suffered rejection even from his brothers. When he wanted to kill 
um, Goliath. His brothers, they, they mocked him, they ridiculed him. So David has always been a very lonely man, has been on his own until Jonathan came into his life. And Jonathan was the only person who stood with him and Samuel, praise the Lord, and Samuel before when he was ordained. So the reason is Jonathan deceived his father. He told his father because he wanted to go and leak the secret to his very good friend. He told his father he wanted to go and he said, oh, let me go for our family as a sacrifice in the city. He deceived his father. So Jonathan did not speak the truth about the real reason why David didn't go. Since this would have incriminated David, he could have kept it silent. So Jonathan was so much, he, we won't say he's very deceptive. He's more like protecting who God is protecting. Praise the Lord. So what are the strengths of Jonathan? What do we know is Jonathan's strength? What can we say Jonathan has strength? Number one, he was very, he was not a selfish person. Unselfish love. Jonathan had unselfish love. 1 Samuel chapter 18, 1 Samuel chapter 18, 1 Samuel chapter 18, if you have your Bible, from verse 1 to 4. Unselfish love. Number 1, 1 Samuel chapter 18, verse 1 to 4, it says, Now when he had finished speaking to Saul, the soul of Jonathan was neat to the soul of David, and Jonathan loved him as his own soul. Look at it. In While I was in the Bible college, some people who came, they said, and this was the second homosexual relationship in the Bible. I don't know where they got that from. Because somebody's <laughs> soul was next to somebody does not mean there's a homosexual relationship. The first one they said was, the first homosexual relationship in the Bible is the one between Ruth and Naomi. I said, how did we get there? Family, this is why we need to know our Bible very well. Because these days, people have turned Bible upside down. He said, why will uh, Ruth, not, uh, Naomi, not leave the mother and follow the mother-in-law? What for? It's because they were into some relationship. There's nothing like that in the Bible. Family, I repeat, there's nothing like that in the Bible. So the Bible says, the soul of Jonathan was knit to the soul of David, and Jonathan loved him as his own soul. So that's where they took their word from, which is not true. Saul took him that day and would not let him go home to his father's house anymore. Then Jonathan and David made a covenant because he loved him as his own soul. And Jonathan took off the robe that was on him and gave it to David with his armor, even to his sword and his bow and his belt. You can see. Very cordial relationship. Relationship Okay, ma. Yes, mommy. I'm sorry to unmute. Um, yes, we can. Leave. I think if we, when we read the, the 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 scripture of Saul, Saul was very jealous of David, especially God anointed David, and he knows. But even though Samuel has made Saul whatever, there was a sense of jealousy, and Saul suffered from depression. And any time the spirit of depression come upon him, the only person who could calm him down was David by playing music to him. And there he will come out of it and be normal like you and I. But on, even then, he had um, hatred in him for David. But yet David would not hate him back. And I think Jonathan saw that because David could have do evil back to Saul. But he never did it. He even even when he was hiding from Saul, he showed Saul he can see him searching for him, and he took whatever and cut the hair, um, tail of his the frock that whatever he was wearing, and and Saul didn't even know. And he mentioned it to him. He says, "I could have killed you, but I didn't. I show you 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 know you passed close to me." And um and I think David observed. Jonathan observed all those things. Mm. And he loved David. As God would love us, we got a lot of flaws. But God continued to love us. He doesn't show partiality to me over you or to you over me. He loves us. And we would say, well, 
I do all these things with God. Why does he love Pastor Daly more than me or me more than God don't do that. He loves all of us mm -hmm. with the same love. And that is what when we read if well, I don't know for anybody, when I read the scripture, I discover this is the sad type of love Jonathan displayed towards David. It has nothing. I know the gay people think that um they were gay because in the West everything, if two person walk in where I come from, people used to walk and hold hand men and nobody think they were gay or nothing. But mm. in the West, it you know, it has turned the Bible say in the last days a lot of things would happen. And everything you do has a sexual connotation into it. And mm. so what Jonathan display is the love of God. It doesn't matter you doing you you walking for God. You're not perfect. You're going to fall. But as a friend, I'm supposed to stand close to you. I can tell you in secret, look, you fall. You oh. this, but I will never humiliate you in public or when we shouldn't. Or just say, oh, I don't want to be in this man's church because he, he is no good. He's not this. He's not that. That's not love. That mm -hmm. love God talks about, Jonathan displayed to David. And um, if somebody else want to add to that, Absolutely. they can do so. Thank you so much for that, Mommy. Thank you very much. You said, talking about the unselfish love. Thank you, Mommy, for that. We read it now. How, even to the extent of making covenants with David by exchanging his robe. Let me say this, family. The moment he gave David his robe, he has given David his authority. He has given him his power. He has given him his succession. You see, all these things are very, very spiritual. For the mere fact that he loved David so much, the Bible says in verse 4 of 1 Samuel chapter 18, and Jonathan took off the robe. A robe is a garment of honor that he has given to David. Not only did God anoint David in 1 Samuel chapter 16, everything was working in David's favor. Even to the extent that when God says he has rejected Saul, he did not only reject Saul, he rejected Saul and his entire household. Because if you read the latter chapters of First and I will tell us later, the Bible said, and when it was David's turn, when he became king, and there was a famine for over three years, and David made inquiry, and God told him, it is because of the bloody hands of Saul. He has killed the Gibeonites when he should not have killed them. It's Saul and his household. Do you know that when Saul is going to do all this, he will carry Jonathan with him and they will go and fight, not knowing. This is where many of us need to understand that. May we not suffer what our parents have put their hands in. May we not suffer what error our parents have made in the name of Jesus. You see, so everything about Saul's household, God has rejected. So, for him to remove his garment, his bow, and his armor, his arrow, everything, and his belt, he has given authority to, to David. So he has said, I'm not taking anything. I don't want to be the success, to succeed my parent, but you, I give it to you. It may look like a covenant in a good way, but it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's like somebody giving what their inheritance. Remember the story of... Um, Jacob and Esau, when he gave porridge, ordinary porridge, he lost his birthright. So all those things are part of God's grace. So he had unselfish love for David. Most people would have considered David to be Jonathan's enemy. They should have been rival. But as soon as Saul brought David in, that should have been the beginning of rivalry. But the Bible said Jonathan loved him as his own soul. Family, as mommy said, please love one another, no matter what. Especially anything that has to do with God. Love everything that has to do with God. Love the people who God has brought into our lives. Love the people who God has brought into our life. Love everybody. That is the bottom line of life. When you are a loving person, love will radiate in your life. So the Bible says, and I continue, Jonathan was heir to the throne. But God appointed David instead. Saul fought against this 
with all his mind, but Jonathan was willing to forget his own self-interest in his love for David. Jonathan and David represent a picture of true friendship. I said it the other day, I said, be friendly. Be friendly, family. No matter what. You, in as much as it is possible, the Bible says on your side, be, live at peace with everyone. Be friendly. This friendship now, this unselfish love that was between them, do you know that it later gave birth to the remembrance of Mephibosheth? Even after Jonathan has died, David woke up one day and said, is there anybody remaining in 2 Samuel chapter 9 in the house of Saul that I can show some kindness to for Jonathan's sake? Family, whatever seed we sow now, one day, one day, if we don't repeat, our children will repeat. That is how it is. When we sow the seed of love, we'll repeat one time. If we sow the seed of good, we'll repeat one time. So, David and Jonathan represent the picture of true friend. Not only did David, not sorry, not only did Jonathan bear animosity towards David. He did not bear any animosity. There was no time that they argue or fought. No. But he made a lasting covenant with him. He went so far as to protect his future rival to the truth. Family, can we do that? When you know that ah, this person is coming to contest with you for your throne, will you do that? No. Number two, Jonathan was a very courageous man, very courageous. In 4 Samuel chapter 13, 4 Samuel chapter 14, please read it later. Jonathan was famed for his courage. He didn't let numbers deter him because of his deep trust in God. He wasn't afraid to go up against enormous opposition. He was very courageous. Very, very courageous man. He never let anything deter him. He believes in the God that he serves, that God is more than able. Number three, the good things about Jonathan, submission to the will of God. Jonathan submitted to the will of God. He knows that what he can't undo, he hand it over to God. 4 Samuel chapter 20, 4 Samuel chapter 20, verse 31. 4 Samuel chapter 20, verse 31. I read for us. 4 Samuel chapter 20, he said, For as long as the son of Jesse lives on the earth, you shall not be established nor your kingdom. Now therefore send and bring him to me, for he shall surely die. Look at the curse Saul was placing on his own son, that his kingdom would not be established because Jonathan loved David. So he, he accepted the will of God. If you look at verse 42 as well, so the Bible says, as verse 42 of 1 Samuel chapter 20 says, Then Jonathan said to David, Go in peace, since we are both sworn in the name of the Lord, saying, May the Lord be between you and me, and between your descendant and my descendant forever. So he arose and departed, and Jonathan went into the city. You can see family. He reminded David of the covenant they made. He knew that he wasn't going to succeed his father, but he never felt bitter against David. And he told him, say, remember, it's a covenant between me and your descendants. So Jonathan humbled, humbly submitted himself to the will of God. How will you feel if God tells you that the person who is standing next to you is going to bless the person more than you. Family, we should understand that when God bless your neighbor, he is going to bless you invariably. When God honors whoever is around your life, he's going to honor you invariably. When you just connect to family, I have seen people fight for what they should not fight. When God blesses you, you remember that there are other people who are around your life as well that need to be blessed. So, Jonathan humbly submitted himself to the will of God, even when it meant giving up his future kingdom. He didn't pursue his own interests or push for his own way. When he realized that God wanted to establish David and not himself, he humbly bowed out of the picture and submitted to God's hand. Number four, loyalty. Jonathan was extremely loyal. Family, if you have friends like Jonathan, Cherish them, please. If you have people in your life who are like Jonathan, mm. carry them like ego, value them. And if you are a Jonathan, 
the Lord himself will bless you. He knows how he will compensate you. That's one thing I want you to know. God never disappoints you, no matter what. I pray that all of us will be like Jonathan. We'll be there for somebody. We'll stand by somebody, whether rain or sunshine. Family will not stand on the path of injustice. We will not say, oh, because my father or because my mother is my mother, my father, then I will stand on the path of injustice. When you stand on the path of justice, God knows how he will compensate you. So Jonathan was extremely loyal. He saved David's life on more than one occasion and was a loyal friend. However, he was also a loyal son and didn't reject his own father. He was torn between two people, God's first king and the God's second king. How can we manage that when you are between two people that you know that there's no how you can betray? You just have to play the game right, praise the Lord. They remain undivided, even in death. If you read 2 Samuel chapter 1, till the end, he was with his father. Till the end, he went with his father to fight. Till the end, Jonathan even said that Saul did nothing without discussing it with him. In 1 Samuel chapter 20, verse 2. So you can see, he was a very loyal man to the end. Loyalty is very important these days. So, what are the very important things Jonathan did? Exploit Jonathan did. Number one, he smote the garrison of the Philistines and started the war to free Israel from their power. In 1 Samuel chapter 13, verse 3, 1 Samuel chapter 13, verse 3, he smote the garrison of the Philistines and started the war to free Israel from their power. Number two, he attacked the Philistines with only his armor bearer and started a route that drove the Philistines before them. So he attacked the Philistines. So Jonathan has been a warrior. He was a fighter. He knew how to fight the battle. So how did Jonathan die? Jonathan died by the hand of the Philistines in a war. He was killed in battle fighting for his country. He died with his father. He died with his father. What are the lessons to learn from this life? We can learn from Jonathan how to be a true friend. From 1 Samuel chapter 23, verse 16, Jonathan loved David as himself. He was willing to give everything that belonged to him to David. He encouraged David in the Lord. He protected David. This wasn't friendship with the purpose of gaining something as to so many friendships are in this world now. It's no friend of friend. Friend, what can you? What can I benefit from you? It's a friendship of very cordial interest, free. It is a friendship to make everybody happy, but nothing to gain in 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 retrospect. So, in the world, people say, "I will be your friend if you do these things for me." Jonathan was selfless, and this is how we should all relate to our friends. Not my friend did not buy me this. My friend should give me that. You know, this is a lesson for every one of us. Be that true friend that come rain, come sunshine, let me just be my friend. Be your friend and nothing more. Number two lesson to learn from the story of Jonathan. We learn about the person God uses from Jonathan in 1 Samuel chapter 14. If you have time, read it later. 1 Samuel chapter 14. The man or the woman, the person God will use. Let me read it for a first Samuel chapter 14. Now it happened. One day that Jonathan, the son of Saul, said to the young man who bore his armor, come, let us go over to the Philistine garrison that is on the other side. But he did not tell his father. And Saul was sitting in the outskirts of Gibeah under a pomegranate tree, which is in Migron. The people who were with him were about 600 men. Ahijah, the son of Ahito, Ikabo's brother, you can see Ikabo is still there, the son of Phineas, the son of Eli, the Lord's priest in Shiloh, was wearing an ephod. But the people did not know that Jonathan had gone. So Ikabo did not die with his mother. He was still there when the mother died. Ikabo means the glory has departed. Praise the Lord. So what are the characteristics of the man or the person God uses? The person God uses is willing to go. So I want to talk about the person God will use. 
And my prayer is, may the Lord use you. May the Lord use me. The person God will use must be willing to go. Are you willing to go for God? How far are you willing to go for God? Are you willing to serve God? Go over and above. Be a pillar and be a strength in the things of God. While everyone else was hiding or staying, Jonathan had a different attitude. Jonathan was very active where they were passive. Others were passive. Jonathan says, let's go. Others were quiet. The enemies were raging. They were raking and causing problems for them. But Jonathan made up his mind. Let us go and fight these people. Others were afraid, but Jonathan was brave. Others were waiting for someone else to do something. Others were waiting for something to happen. Be that person that will change the pattern. Don't wait for anything to happen. Be the one to change the pattern. Praise the Lord. Jonathan takes initiative. No one made him do it, but he sees what needs to be done and he does something about it. Don't just be a spectator. Be a partaker. Be a partaker. Partake in whatever needs to be done. Don't say, let us see how far they will go. Let us see what will happen. Family, we will continue to see things happen, but the history will be, what did you do to make it happen? Throughout the Bible, we see that the primary characteristics God is looking for in his messengers is willingness. Are you willing to go for God? How far are you willing to go for God? How far are you willing to go for God? He says, Isaiah chapter 6, verse 8 and 9 says something. Isaiah 6, 8 and 9 says, Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? And I said, Here am I. Send me. He said, Go and tell these people. So are we ready to be sent? Are we ready to go far for God? God does not always choose the most educated people, the people with the highest IQ or the most talented. Mm -mm. He's looking for people who are willing to say, who will go? Who are willing to say, here I am, send me. Jonathan was willing to go. According to 1 Samuel chapter 14, where we read. So each of us needs to answer the question, are you willing or are you willing to be used by God? Are you willing to go? Will you go? Are you ready to go? Will you go? Number two about the person of Jonathan, the person God uses as a big vision. The person God uses as a big vision. I read a book about William Carey. William Carey wrote a book. He said, attempt great things for God. Expect great, great things from God. When you do great things for God, <laughs> he will do great things through you. Family, he says, the book said, attempt great things for God and expect great things from God. Expect the greatness of God. Expect the magnitude and the power of God. Attempt great things for God. Expect great things of God. Praise the Lord. So we see that Jonathan was doing in that passage. Jonathan had a big vision. He had a very high goal. He wasn't out to catch a strangler or perhaps steal or sh a ship to carry a raid or get a few weapons. He wanted to take out a fortified outpost defended by many men. What do you think Saul would have said if Jonathan had told him his plan? The father would have said, don't go. But he didn't tell his father. He went. I've seen it in this Bible family. Whenever we read this Bible, most times when you share your goals, with nobody. Let me speak like this. Joseph shared his vision with his brother. They hated him. They caused him problem. Abraham, when he wanted to go and sacrifice Isaac, he did not tell his wife. He only went. And God changed his life for that. Jonathan is somebody else as well that did not tell his father what he wanted to do. And God granted him victory over that. Most times, when God has given you a big vision, Share it with your God. Keep it to your heart. And you will see the end result. No matter how difficult it is. Praise the Lord. So, what do you think will have happened if Jonathan has told his father what he wanted to do? Probably something along the line. You must be crazy. What are you going to do? You want them to kill you? I'm not ready to fight. I'm not, I am not. can't fight this battle. Or the father will have said, will there be other guys and sheep for us to carry back home? Will we benefit anything? When God told him to destroy the Amalekite, 
he carried some things. The father was like, okay, when you're coming back, bring me some sheep and bring the other guys with you. So most people's goals were very low. Survive, leave. Jonathan attempted something that most people would laugh at. But he didn't attempt this in his own strength. He didn't think his own military powers would give him the victory. Instead, he places his faith in God. He says, perhaps the Lord will act on our behalf. Nothing can hinder the Lord from saving. He believed that God will be with them and give them the victory. He knew it. It was God's power. Never do anything without God's power, family. Jonathan did all in God's power. Everything you must do, let God's power prevail. Our view of God is directly correlated to the steps of faith we take. Do something big for God. It will give you very big vision and dreams. Let me say this again. Our view of God is directly correlated to the steps of faith we take. So what does that mean? If you take a bold step for God, it will make that way for you. And family, I can tell you, God is never a failure. He's not a debtor that will not pay back what you have given. Praise the Lord. If you believe in a big God, you will attempt big things for him. You believe God is real. You believe God is big. Do exploits for him and your life will never be the same. I'm hoping we understand what we are doing tonight, family. We're talking about the man called Jonathan. So, if you believe in a big God, you do big, attempt big things for him. If you believe in, in a little God, you believe in a small God. You will be afraid of trying in fear that it will let you down. For example, some of us, some of us, you have relatives who are hostile to the gospel and seem very hard-hearted. Do you believe God is big and powerful enough to change their hearts? Or are they a lost cause? If you believe in a big God, you will keep praying and you will keep sharing with these people. If you believe in a little God, you will give up and say, you don't know my uncle. There's no way someone like him will ever accept or believe the God of heaven. But when you keep praying, you are not the one who will change them. It is God that will change them. You pray for them. God will touch them. Will you believe God is big enough to do something great in your life? God is big enough to change the heart of the most skeptical unbeliever. God is big enough to help you start a Bible study on a campus or a university or your workplace where there are no other believers. God is big enough to reach anywhere you tell him you want him to reach with you. Family, God is too big. We serve a big God. That's what one of my mommies on this altar says, Pastor, you are a small car with a big engine. It is because the engine manufacturer is God. I believe that. No matter how the small car may be, we have a God that's built. Let me say this, family. Since that day that, that my mommy said it, that Gigi said it's a small car with big engine. I said the engine God gave us is called supersonic engine. It is called Jets, jets, you know, the one bam, bam, and that is what God has given us, family. And you should be proud of yourself that you are part of what God is doing. How can a young, small ministry, we every day we record testimonies? Somebody called me from nowhere today and said, Pastor, I am one of your faithful members on this altar. I am 52 years old, no children. I want to share my good news with you. I am pregnant, 52. No children. Is that not a big God? Where, how did he come? <laughs> Family, even me, when I hear those type of testimonies, I'm like, <laughs> God, you again? Again? Is that not a big God? That is something to encourage every one of us that God, we serve a big God. Somebody say, I serve a big God. Say it as if you mean it. You see, when you know you serve a big God, you have that boldness. Nothing will move you. Nothing will shake you. See what Jonathan did. He went to fight the garrison with how many? 600 people. And he won the battle. We serve a big God, family. We serve a big God. So do I have a goal for how you want God to use you? Make sure you are sold out for God. Be ready. Be willing. Go over and above and do the exploit for God. Number three thing about Jonathan. 
the man, the person, the woman, God uses as great faith. How big is your faith? What size is your faith? How long is your faith? One of the most memorable faces in this chapter we've read, 4 Samuel chapter 14, is the faith part, the statement of faith in God. He said, nothing can hinder the law from saving us. See how they, Jonathan spoke. Nothing can hinder the Lord from saving us, whether by many or by few. Please go and read the whole 1 Samuel chapter 14. You'll be encouraged. We, you know, we never studied Jonathan like this. That's why I took my time to write so many things out so that we can learn. There's nothing that can hinder God from saving us. Family, go and read the whole of First Samuel chapter 14. You'll be encouraged. Nothing will move you. Nothing will shake your face. So, Jonathan knew that it wasn't about the number of soldiers. It was all about God's power. He had an almost insurmountable challenge, but he believed in God's power to bring about victory. Likewise, God has given us a huge task, telling us to make disciples of all nations, to reach all the world for Christ. Praise the Lord. The current population of the world now is around 7 billion, 699 million, 102,112. That's the current population of the world. That is increasing by 82 million every year, which is about 224,000 per day. There are 17,703 people groups in the world. Over 7,000 of these are unreached. There are still 7,000 on rich groups of people in the world, which is about 40% of the world population. That means they need outside assistance to reach them with the gospel. So what part do you want to play to make sure that we get it? Praise the Lord. This is a big task to fulfill. But when you remember what Jonathan said about God, our God, nothing can hinder the Lord from saving, whether by many or by few. Be one of the few that will do exploit for God. Praise the Lord. No wonder the Bible says the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. The good news is that God can use only a few to accomplish great things. May the Lord help all of us in Jesus' name. Amen. And another thing about the person God used have their own unique role. Jonathan had his own unique role. We have focused on Jonathan so far. Jonathan stepped up. He took initiative. He took the lead. He served as a model. At the same time, there are two key people in this story. The armor bearer is also very important. He's not as famous. We don't even know his name. The armor bearer. Jonathan's armor bearer. All we know is Jonathan had an armor bearer. But he too was willing to go. He too was brave. He too had faith. Sometimes you may be the first one to step out and take initiative to build God's kingdom. That is good. Other times you may see others step out and follow them. That is good too. No matter what, all of us cannot become pastors, but we can become pastors and more bearer. All of us cannot become evangelists. We can become evangelists and more bearer. Every person has a rule. You know one thing I always I say in the means I said we talk about all this Michael Jackson. Oh, Michael Jackson has a good voice. That one has a good voice. We've forgotten that he has drama. If there's no drama behind Michael Jackson, we would have finished that. Oh, if there's no drama behind all these uh, Bonner boy, all these people, will they dance any dance? No way. It is because there are good people behind them. Stand behind whoever God has ordained in you, Lord, your life, and do the work of. Go together with your unique role in your little way. If you are in the prayer team, be the prayer champion. If you are in the ushering team, usher with joy. If you are in the cleaning team, clean with gladness. Whatever you are doing, do it well. Don't do it so that you say, oh, nobody sees me. Nobody appreciates me. Let me tell you, God sees all that we do. He's a God that sees all our labor. So Jonathan was surrounded with people who are willing to go with him. Every person has a role in building God's kingdom. Our roles are not necessarily the same, but they are important. And the work, we work together in unity for a common person. Do you know what your role is in building God's work? Family, what is your role? I, I want you to answer that in your heart. What is your role as a servant of God? What role do you play 
to make sure that the things of God work. Don't just go to church and say, look at it, look at the chair, so dirty, they didn't want to arrange it. Look at that, ah, look at this. Look. When you see things not right, you make it right. Praise the Lord. And number five, the person God uses, recognizes it is God's victory. Recognizes it is God's victory. For Samuel chapter 18, for Samuel chapter 14, where we read, Jonathan claims that the Lord has given them into his hands of Israel. The Lord has given, he said, in verse 15 as well, he says, we see that God sends a panic which engulfs the entire Philistine. So, it, it is the victory, any victory that comes is the victory of God. It's not any man's victory. Proverbs 21 verse 31 says, the horse is made ready for the day of battle, but victory rests with the Lord. Anytime we win, Anytime we hear testimony, it is God in action. The victory belongs to God. It's not about man. It's about God. It's about God. But God is just using man to accomplish what he has accomplished. Praise the Lord. So it's about God. It's not about anything, anybody. It's about God. Every testimony, every victory, every joy, every breakthrough is ascribed to the Almighty God. So Jonathan gave all the credit and all the glory to God. Who is the one who deserved it? So whenever and wherever we serve God, we need to embrace the same attitude of humility. Praise the Lord. Give God praise. Thank him for the victory he has given. Thank him for the joy that has come. Thank him for the many more. So can you persuade anyone to believe in Jesus? The Lord himself deserves the praise. And finally, number six, the person God uses can be a catalyst for a movement. You can be a catalyst for a movement. A catalyst is somebody that changed the pattern. Before Jonathan took action, the people were hiding in caves and resting under trees. Be the game changer. Be the one to change the pattern. No one was doing anything. Everyone was waiting for somebody to do something. So in their vacuum of vision, in their cocoon, they were running away. Jonathan steps up. He doesn't wait for someone else to make the first move. He made the first move. He, he took the bravery. Family, be brave. Oh. Some of us, in this 2024, there are some steps of faith you will take. Steps of faith. Be brave. There's, there's a lot of things to learn from this story. The first person to eat a crab is always the first person that enjoyed the crab. It's a Chinese proverb. I don't know where that came from, but I just read it from one of the books. I was saying, the first person that eats a crab is the first person that enjoys the crab. Whoever eats a crab is very brave. Praise the Lord. I could have said that in Chinese language for us, maybe. The Lord give me the grace. So that's what it means. So it's a Chinese language. It means So the first person who eats a crab is the first person that is brave to enjoy the crab. So I'm just giving you Chinese. On Monday night like this, I'm always Chinese mood. Praise the Lord. So, okay, take that with you. Finally, family, all we can hear from Jonathan's story is he was a man that loves God. He was a man that loves his friend. He loves his father. He was a neutral man, but he played a good role to make sure that the person who God loves did not fail. And I pray for every one of us, we shall not fail in Jesus' name. This is a beautiful story to learn, family. We are learning about the Bible character. Next time, let me give us another one to look out for. We shall be talking about King Solomon. What do we know about Solomon? I will give you all Solomon's wife's name next week. Be prepared. You will write 1,000 names down. I know all their names. I mean, I went to do my research. Solomon had 700 wives and 300 concubines. I will tell you all their names next week. Come and be blessed. We're going to talk about how did he survive. I told us, the day I studied Solomon, I said wisdom is good. He knew that he will fight war. He decided to marry all the king's daughters. So which king want to kill him? You say you want to kill him, just say, yeah. And Bathsheba, come, come, come. Your father say he want to fight us. So yeah, stand in the front. Will you kill your daughter? No. The man used wisdom. Too much wisdom is too much. Too bad. 
At the end of the day, vanity upon vanity. Praise the Lord. You know, one good thing is Solomon did not even sleep with those women. No. Solomon did not. If by now Solomon should have had many children, he only used them as bodyguard. Amor. Family, it's a lesson to learn from them. Wisdom. When wisdom is too much, it becomes too much wisdom. Praise the Lord. I love you so much, family. Jonathan is a very good story to learn from. Be encouraged that God can use anybody. I'm hoping we enjoyed it as well. Family, because I'm doing a lot of research work on the characters of the Bible. So I hope we're enjoying it. Next week, we're going to talk about Solomon. Praise the Lord. God bless every one of us. Thank you very much for joining us. Please don't forget, this morning, the Lord gave us instruction. On Thursday, we are fasting. So we are fasting to break every stubborn problem in our lives. You can break at 12. You can break at 3. You can break at 6. Praise the Lord. Depending on your strength. You are the one who will pray for yourself. Tell God, Father, any stubborn problem that has been lingering in my life, break them for me. Praise the Lord. Don't forget, tomorrow night we are meeting again, 9 p.m. for the Bible study, and we are meeting after for our midnight prayers. We are still dealing with this stubborn problem. Stubborn problems must disappear in the name of Jesus. We see you tomorrow morning by the special grace of God. I love you so much. Jesus Christ is Lord. Please be happy. Something good is about to come to pass in everybody's life. In Jesus' name. Let's share the grace together. I hope we enjoyed tonight's service. If not, let me know. If there's any Bible character you want us to study, send them to me. I will do the research. We will learn it together. Praise the Lord. Next week, Solomon is who we are talking about. Let's share the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, 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 Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.